Hey, buddies, Potato McWhiskey here, and welcome to Civilization VI as Arabia. Where we left off, we had done a little bit of a heist in order to get ourselves the Great Bath in our capital, which has basically been completely worthless for us because we haven't gotten a single flood. So sometimes you gamble and it doesn't pay off. Ours kind of paid off, but didn't. Very weird situation to be in. And we managed to also get our very first city settled, like our extra expansion, and that is the city of Homs. Now, in between the episodes, I have spent a little bit of time planning, and I've decided upon this sort of setup. I definitely want to be getting at least a campus and a holy site or theater square. I want to be getting ideally all three of those, but if I'm going to be getting two, it's going to be a campus and a holy site, if I can. That's going to kind of inform how I play with these cities. Uh, I definitely want an encampment in Homs to defend against any potential French aggression. And I also want a government plaza as a priority. So I think the second I finish, finish astrology, I'm going to be heading over here for bronze working in order to grab the, um, this tile with the rainforest. I also would really, really like to settle a city here on this open tile because the loyalty isn't too bad yet and see if I can get myself the Chichen Itza in here because there is a decent amount of rainforest because Brazil just spawned to my east. And I think that would be pretty cool if we could get Chichen Itza this game. Uh, in terms of down here, I'm kind of thinking of maybe settling on this maze and then moving the city in the Petra onto the diamonds. And then I'll probably get a city over here somewhere. I haven't fully decided that. That's why there's two pins. So that's kind of like our goal. This our, our goal this episode is to get as many of these cities settled as possible and to survive. Survival is 100% of what we're doing right now, um, which is why I'm chain building slingers out of homes with a uh, slinger production card plugged in a fire started over here okay that's worth thinking about i'm also going to send my chariot towards nalanda just kind of prospectively like maybe i can snag the city and force it to flip to neutral and kind of delay japan all right well this is going to throw a wrench in my plans so that means those two cities right here are just gone if he settles anywhere nearby. I'm going to hopefully try to block him from doing anything. And there's dinosaurs appearing all over just outside my empire. Jesus, these Stikerosauruses are actually quite strong. I was not expecting them to be that tough. All right, Tokyo is settled there, which means we are very, very boxed. Um, I had wanted to... Unit was captured by a barbarian. What the hell? No! A smile at it spawned I want to I want an action replay of that it spawned on my builder that is it spawned on my builder that is some bullshit right there right, I'm gonna put the trade route in Homs because I want this city to grow and produce a little bit faster I really want to build a campus so that I can get the state workforce boost because that will actually get me a production boost with Singapore but unfortunately I think I think I actually just cannot delay settlers anymore because the map is already boxed in and I only have room for three more settlers. So I got to go hard and get them now. We've entered into the classical era so we can choose an inspiration. I think I'm going to take Exodus of the Evangelists maybe because I could potentially get a religion for free this era. Free Inquiry though is honestly the easiest one to trigger and I may not even build a holy site this era. So I'll take Free Inquiry. I'll send the trade route to my capital just to get the plus one food and production in Hom so that the city is slightly better. Why? Why is a Styracosaurus fortifying on a hill or on a forest so that he's even stronger than my warrior? What is the, what, a, what? What is, is this dinosaur building a fortification with its like hooves or whatever dinosaurs have? What is this madness? Now, something's about to happen here that in my my opinion should not happen. This thing is going to auto pillage my trader. All right. And in my opinion, that's some bullshit. We did get our, we did get our, um, great profit here. We have access to our very first governor. I'm going to take Liang this game because that's what we decided to go with uh, for Cairo to prevent the city from getting wrecked by this volcano. And I would like an envoy, but I think getting political philosophy is actually just such a huge deal that we kind of have to rush it. All right, this Smilodon has got to die. I'm not okay with what's happening. Catastrophic eruption in the capital. Hopefully not too bad. There's bronze working. Uh, workable tiles at least. All right, we'll throw the slinger. We'll kill with the chariot. Boom. Recaptured our stolen builder. So this builder, this builder. Think about what this builder has been through, okay? <laughs> Originally, the builder was built by Nalanda. So he gets to live in this awesome independent city-state, okay? 
Then the lander gets attacked, okay? The Japanese attack. And that is not a good meme. You don't want to get attacked by the Japanese. That's not going to end well for you, okay? So he runs. He does what any citizen would do. He runs and he finds himself in the marsh where he gets stolen. He gets kidnapped. He gets kidnapped by some men in chariots, all right? In a marsh. In the middle of nowhere. Miles away from his homeland. And they tell him, you, go to Cairo. Go to Egypt, okay? From the lander. Walk there. And then as they're walking through the jungles of this world, some weird sloth bear thing just appears out of nowhere and animes the leader of their group, kills him, eats him alive. And then somehow, <laughs> somehow these intelligent prehistoric creatures kidnap the builders and force them to ride on their backs to Egypt, okay? And then when they get here, they get, they get peppered with sling bolts and surrounded by warriors and chariots before those beasts are killed. Those beasts could have been taking those builders to some promised land and they'll never know. They're going to be used up by my empire to build some random ass infrastructure. All right, that's the story of the builders, all right? I grabbed bronze working. It would be kind of cool to be able to get masonry here to be able to build walls. So I am going to go for masonry and then I'll probably head towards currency and mathematics. Um, oh, I should really think about archery. So I'll put a couple turns into masonry and then maybe switch to archery. I kind of wanted to get a kill with a slinger um, to boost archery. That would have been kind of neat, but it would have made my slingers a little bit more expensive. And I'm happy to spend gold on that. I'm surprised that these builders are not traumatized. OK, they should be. Owie, Jesus Christ, every time. Every scout I've ever made either gets himself killed by like natural disasters or barbarians in the Arctic. All right, this is just the life of being a scout. Now, I did just unlock the ability to do mutual open borders, which I'm going to offer to every single AI because it'll net me a slight bit of positive value. And if you check our relationship, it'll give me plus three to relations. So they're more likely to accept an alliance with me. And also this will give me useful information because if an AI refuses an alliance with me or to make a friendship after I've given them open borders, it's usually a good sign that they're probably going to attack you. I also don't mind paying for open borders because that is absolutely worth it in order to secure a higher relationship with all of the AI. Mutual border with Pedro will net me a couple of gold per turn. Absolutely beautiful, super worth it. Nobody wants to buy my open borders. This is the quick deals mod, by the way. Oh, actually he has dies I could buy. No, I do have my own dies as far as I remember. No, I actually don't. These are actually the closest possible dies that I could get. I will go ahead and buy that because two gold per turn is nothing for a luxury resource. Let's pop down a plantation on the incense, which I'm immediately going to sell to the AI because it is worth more to sell it than it is to keep it, right? I buy luxuries for like two gold per turn and I sell luxuries for like seven gold per turn. So it's super worth it to sell them. Ooh, there's a mega colossal eruption near me, but not inside my empire. Loyalty is slowly becoming an issue um, in my nearby cities. So I'm going to have to use governors to make up for that. I also totally, totally forgot to plug in the settler production card, which I have in now. So it's 11 turns per settler, which isn't too bad. And I have another copy of Citrus to sell to the AI. Six gold per turn off Pedro. I'll take that. I have 200 in the bank. I could maybe buy something useful. I definitely want this tile, so I'm going to buy it. Man, am I tempted to improve that Citrus. I could improve it and sell it, but I don't think I have any buyers. So until I meet some more people, that's not worth a builder charge. This Plains Hill, though, has nothing planned on it, so it would be kind of cool to improve it. Brazil sent me a delegation, which means it may be possible for me to declare a friendship with them, and it was. So now I can actually move this slinger off of this border with Brazil, because now the probability that he attacks me is near zero. And Japan has actually gone to neutral opinion with me, which means there's a small chance that he'll accept a friendship with me. And if Japan accepts this friendship, We've won the game. If he refuses the friendship, we've lost because he's going to fucking kill us. Oh my god, he accepted. Oh, oh, we are protected. They can't declare war on me for 30 turns. Incredible. Two turns from now, I will get started on the government plaza. So I'll just put two turns into a builder in Homs. Can I get a flood in my capital? What is happening? Give me a flood. Also, there are no religions around here, really. I should probably prioritize a holy site in the near future. Now we have state workforce, we can get started on our government plaza, which is one of the most important early game infrastructures that people always forget to build. Every goddamn time I am sent, all right, every time you guys send me a disaster save file, you haven't built a government plaza. And if you have built a government plaza, you haven't built the buildings in the government plaza. Okay, build this district. It's a good district. Not only does it give you access to some really unique and powerful buildings that give your civilization huge bonuses, it also gives plus one adjacency to every district near it. Now that, 
that is super worth it. Always be building this, okay? Boom. Government Plaza. Eight turns from now, I will have built a district. And I will have fulfilled a mission from Nagazagarmu, who, admittedly, is about to get murdered by the Aztecs because they just declared war on them. In this newly settled city, we actually have some tiles that we want to chop. Um, particularly this rain or this regular forest. And then there's a couple of rainforests and a maze. So I feel like getting Magnus here lines up really nicely with this newly settled city. Plus, we also need a governor to take care of the loyalty in Jeddah uh, until the city can get a little bit of population to defend itself. I'm going to purchase a monument in Jeddah so that it will expand its borders a little bit quicker and we can grab more of this rainforest. But otherwise, I'm going to just go straight into a builder, I think. Brazil is upset that I settled near him. I don't really have any more room for city settles, so I'm kind of okay with uh, telling him I won't settle near him anymore. Japan, I can actually make a similar promise because I don't plan to settle up here. Uh, my plans are to settle two more cities down to the south. Boom, there is archery. Now that gives me access to the archer unit, which is nice for defense. And it also triggers a Eureka slash inspiration for uh, machinery, which could be quite handy if we do get into war. We're kind of protected for at least another 20 turns, so I'm not too worried about that. It's not a priority for me. Ooh, there's a jackal here. Let's kill that jackal and get that free kill. Let's help out Brazil. Now, if you're wondering why I didn't put um, Magnus in my capital so that I make a settler hub, it's mainly just down to the fact that I'm trying out new strategies. I'm trying to show you guys that you don't have to always play the exact same way every game. You can do different stuff, and as long as your fundamental gameplay is like pretty damn solid, you can get away with a lot. I don't want to remove this rainforest because it will eventually be improved by Chichen Itza if I go for it. So I normally I would consider chopping on this tile first, but I am just going to go for the plantation so I have access to my own copies of dyes that I will immediately sell for uh, 12 gold per turn to Eleanor. 12 gold per turn is a disgusting amount of gold long term. We're actually making 47.6 gold per turn and 38 of that is coming from trading internationally our, our resources. Perfect. We get a little bit of error score for grabbing ourselves political philosophy, which means we have access to our tier one or tier two government, depending on how you like to look at it. I like to look at it as a tier one government. Chiefdom doesn't really count in my opinion. Now, there is a pretty good question here of which of these do we want to go for. Each of them actually is potentially a valid choice. I think at the current standing of the game, it's I, I haven't gone in a militaristic direction. I built some wonders. I'm doing all that sort of stuff. So I don't think that oligarchy makes sense here. I'm not going to be building units. I'm not going to be fighting wars. Maybe if I get war declared on me, I might switch to oligarchy to be able to survive it. But I definitely feel like it's between autocracy and classical republic here. Classical republic is, feels a little bit more like the wide choice. Because you could plug in the builder card and the settler card and all that sort of stuff and do a lot of that. Whereas autocracy to me feels like the tall choice. And considering we're only going to get like five to six cities this game, autocracy feels like it's the right move. Because that plus one to all yields is going to be super useful. As is the 10% production towards wonders. Because we do have a couple of wonders on our wish list that we'd like to get. So we have autocracy. We're going to keep in colonization. I will plug in urban planning in the wildcard slot. And I'll take diplomatic league here because I have zero envoys with any city state. So this means it doubles the value of my first envoy. So we'll be able to get two envoys for the price of one. We also got another governor title. And I don't know if I'm ready to go for reinforced materials. I don't have enough infrastructure in my capital to justify that yet. But if I don't use this governor title on it. I have to use two of my next three governor titles on it. So I do need to keep that in mind. There's a, there's a limit, right? I'm only going to be getting another three governor titles for a very, very long time. Like, and even those ones aren't coming very quickly. It's going to be at least another 30 to 40 turns before I get another two governor titles. Um, so I, I think I have one more governor title to spend on something that I want aside from, uh, aside from aquaculture and zoning commissioner. And part of me is thinking maybe Victor, part of me is thinking Moksha, part of me is thinking Pingala for that extra little bit of science and culture. That could be quite handy. I feel like Pingala is the right choice. I'm going to put him in Homs because I think in Homs, I, um, I'm planning a, the, uh, a, 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 a campus. Let's pick up Mysticism for the Envoy and we'll pick up Military Tradition so that my units actually have flanking and combat bonuses. 
It looks like Nazca has been murdered in cold blood, which kind of sucks. And yeah, this is this is the kind of stuff that I was afraid of. Um, units, like these barbarian units appearing inside my empire. I really don't like that. And that's because they can appear on any unowned tiles, which means I'm going to be dealing with a decent amount of them. Let's pop down uh, this guy right here. Boom. We've got four cities in a nice little muscle of loyalty protecting each other. I have the money to get monuments. And absolutely, monuments are of such huge value that I think purchasing monuments with my gold is like a super good use of my early game gold. Goddamn cheetah. It's a, it's a cheetah appearing inside my territory. Like really, really annoying. Now with this new city, we do have to kind of plan out its district. It's on a river, so it doesn't need an aqueduct, but it is on a floodplain. And that means dams are a possibility. And if dams are a possibility, so are aqueducts. And if aqueducts and dams are a possibility, so is an industrial zone. However, we have a problem. We have a volcano here that is in range of the city that will continuously pummel this city and a floodplain. So yeah, we got to plan this city uh, without getting distracted by a rabbit. I think there's too many disasters going on here for me to comfortably put an industrial zone here. Unless it was like... Uh, you know what? Can a dam go on this tile? If a dam can go on this tile, then I reckon an industrial zone can go on this tile. And this industrial zone should actually hit my entire empire. If I put it right there, and if we count out six tiles, one, two, three, four, five, six, I can hit my entire empire with a single industrial zone, which means the AOA production from this is like super useful. And I can power my entire empire from a single district as well which is going to be amazing. Um, and with this floodplain, I reckon it's safe to put a triangle of farms on here. And you want to put a triangle of farms because it's the smallest, most efficient unit of farms. A single farm is really inefficient because a single farm uh, gets no adjacency bonus from other farms. Two farms together is inefficient because they don't get adjacency bonus from each other until uh, mechanization of farming or whatever. However, three farms together, they get a boost at feudalism and then mechanization. So this is like the smallest optimal unit of farms. And then you can get slightly more optimal if you do a diamond but you only have room, I only have a room for a triangle here. If we're going to go for a dam and an industrial zone, that leaves me with potential room for something like a commercial hub. A plus three commercial hub isn't too bad in this city. Um, and I would like to plan two more districts and a campus. A campus and a holy site feels like the, the right thing to do here. Trying to get a good spot for them, though, is tough. I might just have to accept that it'll just be a campus in here and it'll be a plus one pretty crappy campus which is fine by me. Uh, a not so good campus is, is, is totally fine. Although mm, if I moved this commercial hub, I could get another farm triangle here, but I think that, so let me explain my reasoning here. Um, I'm, I'm in a tall game, so I don't have a lot of room to expand, which means I'm going to need a lot of food to build my cities up and have a lot of population. So I need to be thinking a lot more about where am I going to be getting food in these cities? And so if I spot a potential location for a farm triangle, that could be used by another one of my cities. That's something I need to consider. Although this city is going to be fed by Petra, which isn't like the most amount of food that a city ever had, but I, I can actually put a farm here. And with a water mill, this city will have tons of food. So I think that's fine actually. So I don't need to consider that. And this is all totally fine. So now needs to grow as fast as possible to increase its production. So I will be building a granary in there. It also needs to grow in order to get loyalty. And I think I might have to temporarily reassign Liang over to Sana to protect it from loyalty pressure. Brazil, I thought this might be Petra, but it's actually, I think, Jebel Barcal, which comes before Petra. So I still, I, I still think I have a chance of getting Petra somewhat uncontested. Oh my god, okay, so Montezuma is like being mad at me, but he's also friendly. That's kind of like a bit, you know, a bit confusing there. Will he take a friendship? Hell yeah, All right, I got friendships with three of my neighbors, which means I'm very, very, very protected from the consequences of my actions, which is exactly how I li like to live my life. That's why I became a YouTuber. I didn't get an education. Nobody cares. I'm mildly, I have like a very small amount of cloud on the internet. I'm protected from all consequences. Unless, unless of course, like I pull like <laughs> what some of those other guys have been doing. Whoo, man, there has been some drama in the streaming world with people getting uh, canceled and for good reason, I might add, right? Good reasons. This is this is the pair of cheetahs running around inside my empire, m making making my life hard. Right, cheetah, you need to go away. I actually used to watch this guy's channel. I think it was like Dolph C. Lundgren. I think his name was. And dude used to go to sleep with a 
like pair of cheetahs or he did a video where he went to sleep with a pair of cheetahs and one of the cheetahs had like a, a mild disability where it couldn't control its bite pressure so it would like it would like chew him in the night and he'd have to kind of like keep dodging away from it we have access to homs how important is it that i get audience chamber right here this is worth six amenities uh, uh it's worth two amenities per city which is a decent amount so i think the city is also locked the city is also locked for growth right now it's at five out of six so i need my granary asap so i feel like audience chamber will also give me housing from mingala i'm going to place the campus because that's one of my core victory condition districts just getting a lot of science could be like the way that we win the game or culture who knows and now that we have the campus placed i might use gold to buy the granary to keep the city growing i, th I think that's the right move i do however well actually most of the tiles it's working are improved and i don't think it's worth it to improve these two tiles because they're adjacent to a volcano so the probability that they get yeeted is very high but i am sitting on a three charge builder which i i actually don't know how i got that three charge builder I'm completely baffled. Did I build a builder? Why do I have a three charge builder? Can anyone explain this to me? Did I, did I make a builder? I have no memory of this. Maybe, maybe it was a tribal village or something. Who knows? Ooh, it would be good to get that iron online because iron is a resource I can sell to the AI and the AI values iron pretty highly. I do think I would like three more archers just to feel really safe and defended. A fucking gorilla. A, f a gorilla just spawned on my borders. Fucking cheetahs attacked my cattle. They pillaged my cattle. What is going on? Get out of here, kitty cat. No one wants you. There's a gorilla. This gorilla is going to smash up my dice. What is happening? Dude, those cheetahs saw the beef and went straight for the beef. All right, appease the god went through. I couldn't even participate in it. I wasn't making enough faith yet. I will be able to start doing appease the god stuff soon. Uh, yeah, there goes my dice. I guess they've just been wrecked. Um, I guess I need to like, I guess I need to get more archers. Is the lesson from this? I think as the map is filling up, more of the animals are spawning near me. Uh, I am sitting on an envoy. I think I want to wait until I can maybe snag a Susan tree for a little bit of error score. If I can kill this cheetah. Gorillas are quite strong, but they're not strong enough. Ooh, this, this guy might take two hits. But I do have an archer here to support next turn. Plus one error score, beautiful, and currency. And that was what I wanted to do here. I'm going to harvest the maze for 135 gold. Use that gold to come into Homs and uncap its housing by purchasing a granary. Which means a lot of this food isn't going to waste and the city will continue to grow rapidly. And I'll be able to place another district down. I'll step this archer forward to shoot this gorilla. This archer will level up volley. And I really wish I had been able to grab that because that would have been cool to have another heavy chariot. Free units are just like god tier. And now we can get to work on mathematics and start heading towards Petra. We should probably think about what we're going to do diplomatic quarter wise as well. I don't have my universities yet. It might be good to pick up the madrasa and start going infrastructure. That's going to be something we do pretty soon. I think I'll get recorded history for that governor title. I think it's time that I promoted Liang. All right, cheetah, at long last, we can get rid of this. We can yeeta the cheetah and BTFO the gorillo. Looks like Eleanor is selling sugar for two gold per turn. I'll grab that offer. And I'm going to sell off my tobacco and my citrus here for gold. We want to be selling off our, our luxuries as much as we can. Let's pop in here. We'll get started on the commercial hub. I'm even going to chop this commercial hub because I want to hit three districts as soon as possible to be able to nail mathematics. So it'll probably be like settler campus in the capital rush this commercial hub maybe chop a forest that a district is going to be going on to which is that one there and then improve the dives or fix the dives yeah i think that's a good that's a good sequence of choices there i feel like we'll improve the iron because that is going to give us plus two iron per turn as well as a couple of boosts one for wheel one for iron working and we can also sell it to the ai ah looks like we found wilfred lachrier of canada uh, that's kind of spooky. Canada is actually a very scary save, but it looks like he's not doing too well this game, so that's fine. But it is time for Harambe to meet his maker. I'm sorry, Harambe. Somebody let you out of the zoo. The, the, the Harambe Liberation Front caused his death. They let him out. He ran around. He smashed up my dives, and now he's got to die himself. Right, we will chop in Jeddah on this rainforest to bring this down to seven turns, which is pretty reasonable in my opinion. And then we'll send this builder around to do some repairs um, from the rampage that the cheetah and uh, the gorilla did. Dude, I am actually so fucking bad at being framed in my shots because I'm so not used to being on camera. Appreciate how hard this is, okay? Like and subscribe. 
Become a member of the channel. Follow me on TikTok, on Twitter, Twitch, everywhere. Follow me. All right. I'm cool. You know, I try. I tried to like throw fake gang signs, but my hands weren't in shot. That's how bad I am at this. Okay. I need to get two era score now, um, which means I just absolutely have to take Susan of Hattusa. Boom. Plus two era score. We've secured a normal age and we won't have to deal with a dark age when we flip over to medieval. I didn't want to have to do that, but I'll take it for now. So I've been sending a trade route to Cairo. Um, how is the gold trade routes looking like here? Gold is not looking too good. I think I'm going to hold this trader for my Petra city because I want to build Petra as soon as I possibly can. Another catastrophic eruption. Eh, didn't do too much damage. That's fine. Catastrophic? Eh, it was fine. Let's go ahead, search the meteors, get ourselves another chariot that we can use to protect our borders. Might be worth it to use my gold to buy as many of these rainforests as I can. Mm, maybe not. 75 gold to get access to salt a couple turns sooner. That's nice. That also boosted apprenticeship, uh, which is definitely going to be happening in the near future. I have a decent amount of no mines now. I have three and I could probably get more. So that'll be useful to get the extra production from that. Man, this continent is super crammed. Oh, what's this? We got some uh, jackals running around in Hattusa. I have to, I have to turn the, the yield tiles off though, so you can actually see the models. I, theoretically, I could enable the dev developer tools and like zoom in on it, but I feel like that might hurt the integrity of a, <laughs> of a let's play. The nice thing is about having all this military is I'd really like to put them inside my cities to get plus one amenity, um, but I don't get that card until civil service because I, I just had that thought and I wasn't able to pull it off. It is time now to settle the Petra city. And this is the location we decided upon. Settling on the diamonds kind of sucks in some ways because we don't get to put a mine on it, which would be really cool. However, settling on the diamonds does allow us to sneak in an extra city up here because that'll be one, two, three tiles away. And that will be our final little city that we can cram in. We will start Petra as soon as possible. But for now, what I'm going to do in this city is um, actually buy a granary because this city is going to struggle to grow. And then I will buy a... Um, and then I'll use most of my gold to actually expand this city and buy the what's the word i'm looking for uh productive tiles productive tiles and then i'll be chopping and stuff like that i might even i might even shunt magnus over to the city for a few turns to make that work okay eleanor has denounced me and japan is upset at where i settled um now eleanor denouncing me is a big problem what is her religion she doesn't have crusade i am following her religion this means I have five turns to prepare for a potential war with Eleanor. So archers need to immediately start moving south and east. And uh, I need to immediately start building walls in these cities, particularly these two. We'll move my trader to Baghdad. So if she, she denounced me, that means I need to be on my toes for the next little while. But on the cusp of potentially getting war declared on us, I'm going to call that the end of the episode. I love you all very much and I'll see you guys next time. Bye bye!